Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm Chris. Melvin Gordon is just never going to be some people's cup of tea. They look at high touchdowns, but some short touchdowns. They look at low yards, they look at low yards per carry, and they say, oh, big candidate for regression. Always looking to give that job away, it seems to me. The hate on him probably not as strong in 2018 as it's been previously, especially not after that rookie year when he had, what, over 200 touches from scrimmage and zero touchdowns? I think this year he's pretty well regarded as a first-round pick, but I sense a lot of people don't have much enthusiasm for that. So I certainly have him as a first-round pick, and I had him there last year as well. Let's take a look at some of the film on Melvin Gordon, and I'll try to explain why I do have faith in the man I call Melly. This is an easy place to start. Gordon's first play of 2017 goes for a nice gain. And I think you'd say it was, it was well blocked and he got a lane provided to him. I'm not going to say this is any sort of majorly special run, but it does point out one of Gordon's strengths as a running back. Sort of coordination between upper and lower body, that vision, and the ability to explode out of a stop. The left guard pulls here, so this is designed to go right. And Gordon is certainly thinking right, but he gets some trash around his feet, the left tackles or flops in his way, and then he stops, but watch him burst into and out of that hole. Those first two steps after he's come to a stop, you know, he's up to speed very quickly and he's through that hole. Let's see that same ability, maybe a little clearer, same game, same quarter. Uh, the Broncos number 51 here, that's Todd Davis, so he's going to shoot the gap and he's going to force Gordon to the outside. A lot of runners can bounce runs to the outside for sure, and they do, but usually not with this kind of explosiveness and off of one foot. Take a look at that cut, because the reason this works for Gordon here and throughout his film is that he doesn't really need to gather himself. The reason we say he looks smooth as a runner is that he can make this cut, stop leg, go leg, in the same step without having to pitter-patter his feet. And that instant you save, as you make your move, both makes it more likely that you're going to get away from the dude you're making the move on, and also, sort of also likely, it makes a bigger play, because the rest of the defense has just that much less time to react because you've done the move quicker. Now, I mean, let's be honest, you get a lot of this with Melvin Gordon, too. You know, that's really not his fault, right? That's, that's the sky caving in on you from both sides. Phillip Rivers has checked to this play. Both outside linebackers are going to come from either edge. Neither guy gets touched by a blocker. All the lateral agility in the world isn't going to save you on this play, and we're not going to blame Gordon. And I think this is where Gordon's detractors maybe both have a point, but also get lost. Because on the one hand, the Chargers have fought offensive line problems throughout Gordon's career, which not his fault and so I'm not going to blame him for a low yards per carry or for not being skilled. But on the other hand, okay, you've got a point. I get it. Who's to say that those offensive line problems are fixed? Watch Philip Rivers' reaction after this play is over. Look where he walks over to after Gordon has been stuffed for a two-yard loss. I mean, not heading to the running back, right? Watch the center, number 73 there, and he's going to needlessly hook block and double-team a Patriots defensive tackle rather than, oh, I don't know, make sure the middle linebacker isn't coming straight up the middle. And I don't know. I don't know the play. Maybe it's the left guard's job. I, I can't tell. It's, it's hard for me to tell. I'm guessing, though, that the play design here did not call for the revenge play from the longest yard where Gordon just gets stoned in the backfield. And uh, yes, there's Phillip Rivers. He is not happy with his blocking on that play. And listen, I can show you plays from any running back in the NFL where the line breaks down and he winds up having no chance. That happens, you know that. It happens multiple times per game for any running back. It's the selective editing thing, right? But with Gordon, I can show you runs like this one where he was stuffed and Gordon winds up with an inordinate number of runs where he's met like this. And as he does here, still does what he can, spins, powers, makes three men tackle him essentially. There have been a lot of Charger line breakdowns the past three seasons, and I know that metrics lovers sometimes talk about average yards gained not just after contact, but also after defenders have closed within one yard. But even then, a play like this, I say there's closing in, and then there's closing in. 
A moment to thank our sponsor, DraftKings. I have the 2018 Player Profile Almanac available right now. You can get it free by making a first-time deposit of $10 at DraftKings right now. Here's all you have to do. Click on the link below me in the show notes. Register and make a first-time deposit of $10 at DraftKings. That's it. Within 24 hours, you will get my almanac. It's 200-plus pages. It's a PDF. It's got all my film grades. It's got a lot of player-related snark. I think you'll really like it, and you'll definitely want to read it before you draft. So click on that link, and thank you again, DraftKings, for sponsoring. All right, let's get back into it. And will the Chargers' offensive line be better this year? I don't think I can tell you that. I mean, there's some hope acquiring Mike Pouncey from the Dolphins, late of the Dolphins, could be really good at center. And Russell Okung was okay at left tackle last year. They drafted two guards pretty early in the 2017 NFL draft. And uh, Dan Feeney played pretty well, one of the guard spots. Forrest Lamp, uh, we haven't seen him yet. I think he's still not in training camp as of my recording this in 2018. The answer really is, I don't know. And usually we don't know. We It's kind of a crutch argument to say, I'm sure the offensive line is better or it's worse or whatever. I'm much more concerned with Gordon's talents as a player because even hampered by a poor offensive line, he's been really good. So let's look at a few plays that I think are awfully special and kind of convince me he's not just another guy. I like the cut when he gets to the second level here. You know, as it, as it turns out, he might not have needed an extremely hard cut because, as you can see, one of the offensive linemen clears out number 52 there. That's Preston Brown. That's a pretty great block downfield on Preston Brown. So it's a case where the offensive line did its job, and Gordon was probably getting through that hole anyway because the room got cleared out. But again, pay attention to the violence of the cut. I'm not going to try and sell you Melvin Gordon as a super elite player of any kind, super elite elusiveness. I don't think he has it. I think he's good. In my player profile almanac, I called him a B-plus speed guy, B-plus elusiveness guy, B-power guy. But stop foot, go foot. Hard to the right and up to top speed right away. It's what I'm looking for when I'm watching running back film, and Melvin Gordon has it. And listen, I'd be blind if I didn't acknowledge that I what, five out of his eight rushing touchdowns last year came from inside the two? That's a little lucky, but just remember what kind of player he is in the receiving game. This score way back in week one of last season, you see the moves, fake the arrow route with a head fake, freeze the linebacker, run the angle route instead, the athletic jump over the safety. I just don't agree when people say they see an average athlete who's benefited from a big workload and some lucky touchdowns. And I like this play a lot. This play starts to get at more of the savvy that Gordon displays as a receiver. It's one of the plays that Brett Coleman and I are going to use in Film.Lie University. Gordon is supposed to go all the way down the sideline on this route, but he looks back, he sees the quarterback in trouble, and cuts back and opens himself up near the sideline to present himself. But watch the way he slows his momentum, trying not to get to the sideline as fast as he can. He's trying to stay alive as long as he can. So if Philip Rivers sees him, there's a maximum time window to get him the ball. The toe tap there, that catch, that's lovely. It's the flashy part of this play. I like the savvy of knowing that it's not about getting to the sideline as fast as he can, but rather timing it out and giving the play the biggest chance of success. I can't sell Melvin Gordon to you as a one-of-a-kind Hall of Fame type talent, because I don't believe it. I think he's good. I think he's above average. I think plays like this, you know, if I'm not going to give Alex Collins credit when he finds himself breaking into the clear and making a nice play, when he should break into the clear and make a nice play, then I can't go overboard with Gordon either. And there's a lot of this among Melly's big plays in 2017, plays a lot of other running backs can make as well. But for me, there's enough of the other stuff that I've shown you, the cutting, the football sense, the smarts, to make me think that the big workloads are warranted by the talent and will continue, that he's quite a good receiver. And yeah, maybe he'll get lucky with plays like this for you too. A lot of running backs will, but he'll also make some that are about his skill. So that's what I think Melvin Gordon is. I think he's an above average running back. I have him as my number seven fantasy running back in standard leagues and in PPR leagues. He's my number eight overall player in all formats. And 
To say that he's just a run-of-the-mill guy who's lucked into stuff is to ignore the film. I think if you take the Isaiah Crowells and the Alex Collinses of the world, but you add some explosiveness, some leg strength, some ability to cut off a of one foot, better hands, better route running, that's probably fair. That's a comparison I can deal with. That's about what Melvin Gordon is, but that's a pretty significant difference. And for me, that's why the workloads have been so big and why he's been able to weather a lot of losses and why he will continue to do so if he stays healthy in 2018. Basically, I think Melvin Gordon is safe. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Hope you'll check out this entire channel and subscribe, and of course, check out the Harris Football Podcast and harrisfootball.com with all my ranks and the almanac. Thanks for watching! Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button, write a comment, tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on, and of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video.